Oceans, beautiful and terrifying. They cover around 70% of the Earth's surface and contain more life than anywhere else on the planet. Yet despite their prominence, large parts of our oceans are still unknown and unexplored. In fact, as of 2023, only around 25% of the global seafloor has been mapped, leaving many to speculate what else could be out there. But rather than imagine what could be living in the deep, scary depths, today we'll be looking at something that actually does. The anglerfish is perhaps the first image many might picture when deep oceans are mentioned. It's an incredibly iconic creature, the striking image of which has been documented and shown in many pieces of media, most famously perhaps in Finding Nemo, a scene I'm sure caused many kids to experience crippling fear of deep water, myself included. Today we'll be looking at these fascinating creatures and I'll tell you some real-life lore about these killers from the abyss. So let's dive in. Now for starters, it's important to mention that anglerfish is a term that describes more than 200 unique species that differ in appearance, habitat, and even elements of behavior. These populate oceans all the way from the tropics to Antarctica, from relatively close to the shore and water surface down to the so-called midnight zone, and it's these latter deep sea anglerfish that we'll be focusing on today. Inhabiting areas down to 3 kilometers or 1.8 miles deep, where the pressure can reach 300 atmospheres, the deep sea anglerfish have truly adapted to living in the most extreme of conditions. Their appearance is perhaps the most striking, coming in a large variety of colors, most often ranging from dark gray to brown, shapes and sizes. Though they're usually less than a foot large, specimens of up to one meter in size have been identified, sporting a proportionally massive crescent-shaped mouth full of long fang-like teeth angled inward for efficient prey grabbing. Their most striking feature, however, is of course the angler or fishing rod, which usually extends from the dorsal fin away from the body beyond the eyes tipped with a small glowing organ called esca that glows thanks to luminescent bacteria the anglerfish have a symbiotic relationship with. Curiously, most of what I just said mainly pertains to the females of the species, while males tend to be considerably smaller and often don't possess an esca at all. While you might be inclined to think that the only purpose of the fishing rod is to, well, fish for prey, research has shown that it also likely plays a vital role when finding a mate, which brings us to the behavior of these creatures. Deep sea anglerfish are carnivorous predators, but having picked about the hardest environment to survive possible, they have to adapt smart strategies to conserve what precious energy they have. In the wild, they will often spend the majority of time drifting with little to no motion at various angles, with the fishing rod often dangling over small burrows, presumably with the goal of attracting prey. When attacking, these creatures can expand their jaws and stomachs to consume animals up to twice their own size. This evolution also allows them to store additional food, such as shrimp, fish, or other deep-sea animals, which can come in very handy in such nutrition-poor environments. Perhaps the strangest element of their behavior, though, is the means through which they reproduce. In some of the anglerfish species, the male will swim up to the considerably larger female and then bite either its head or stomach, using its teeth to firmly latch on and not let go. It then releases an enzyme that digests the skin of its mouth and the female's body, fusing the pair down to the blood vessel level. The male is from then on reliant on the female for nutrition via their shared circulatory system, while the female effectively has fresh sperm available whenever it is ready to mate. Some theories state that since mates can be so difficult to find in the environment, deep sea anglerfish inhabit, the latch on and don't let go strategy might be the best way of ensuring the survival of the species. Now, to close off, in case you're curious, several species of anglerfish are edible and enjoyed around the world, such as the monkfish, though the deep ocean ones are understandably much harder to come by. 
finally, I mentioned there are many families of anglerfish out there, but if I had to pick my favorite, I might just go with the very metal sounding black sea devil that looks just as horrifying as it sounds. Anyways guys, that brings us to the end of the video. Of course, I'm not a marine biologist and these were just some interesting facts I was able to gather with relatively surface level, <laughs> ironic, research. But if you happen to know more cool facts about anglerfish, please leave them down in the comments below. I would very much like to read them. I want to thank you all so much for watching and if you enjoyed, maybe consider leaving a like or subscribing. Both of those would be very much appreciated. With that, I'm just going to wish you a beautiful rest of the day and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.